So, good morning, Ready Level. Say again. Good morning, Ready Level. Okay. All right. So, guys, don't talk while I'm teaching because it's being recorded. Um, it's a bit of a mess, but I'm going through your homework, which was exercise two in your textbook, which I did photograph. So, what you could have done if your textbook is not with you, you could have just drawn them up. They're very simple diagrams. I can't quite remember where we got to. I think I did A, B, C, D, and E. So I'm going to start with F. All right. So let's just, I've stuck the textbook. I've photocopied it. It's probably illegal. I'll throw it away afterwards. All right. And you just need a calculator. All right. So you'll notice with number F, I'm doing this one here. They've given us the reflex angle at center, and they told us O is the center. So remember, the reflex angle is double the angle at the circumference. So if you just take your 230 and divide that by 2, you're going to get 115. So X should be 115. If I double that 30, double that 2, it's correct. And don't forget your reason. Angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. Okay, that is the reason you've got to learn. Okay, if I look at the second diagram, I'll just quickly redraw it for you. Um, it basically also says that O is the center and it's got a, whoops, it's got a radius here and it's got another radius coming down here. And then we have two chords, so from there to there's a chord, and from there to there's a chord. As long as it's touching circumference, let me put the letters in. They've used A for that point, B for that point, and C for this point. Okay, and what have they given me? They've given me this angle, which is 150 degrees, and this angle here is X. And we've got to solve for X. Now, guys, this angle is not double that angle. We need the reflex angle. So we need this angle. So if you want to, we can call it angle 01, as long as you label it in your diagram. Okay, so you know that the sum of angles around a point add up to 360. So you can say, first you need to say angle 01, so just take 360 and minus 150 and difference of 210 degrees. Put that in your diagram. What is your reason? You either write um, angles around a point or you can write um, angles in a revolution. I might even write some angles around a point. Um, uh, doesn't matter. But you only have to write one of those. Now you have your reflex angle at center. You know this is going to be a half. So half of 200 is 100 and half of 10 is 5. So this will be 105. So therefore, x will equal to 105 degrees. How did I know that? Because basically reflex but you don't have to say that. Angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. So as you'll notice now, each of you is going to get a little bit where you've got to write what have I been given, what I need to do in order to do the following. And that's why it's a little bit like a chess game. And it's fun. And it teaches you logic. I don't want. I, want, I don't want to hear anyone say when am I going to use this in my life. Um, I'm teaching you. I'm training your brain to think logically. That's what I'm doing. Okay. So let's erase this. I will send you the memo later. It might be later today because I've got a rush. I've got a zoom. Excuse the pun. Off to Greenside to teach my matrix after this. Guys, I still don't know what's happening with the timetable tomorrow. So 
what I'm going to suggest is I'm just going to give you homework to do tomorrow and just not have a Zoom just for one day tomorrow until I know what's happening. But I will give you homework and I'll post the answers. And then at least I know that um, we're back to normal Thursday will be 10.20 and Friday 11.45. So there'll be no Zoom tomorrow, but I will just give you homework. Okay. Right, so now let's look at the next two. I'm just going to erase these. So we're going to be looking, that was F and that was G. Let's quickly. If you want to draw a circle and you can't find a protractor or anything, it, it's a good idea to sometimes um, just um, use an egg cup or my grand left me this, it's, it's a copper something. It was a little dish, but it makes the most perfect circle. And I used to just always keep that in my matric blazer. If I ever was doing this section, <laughs> goes right back then. Yeah, beautiful little circle, but obviously not for a whiteboard. All right, so the next, let's look at the next diagram. We're now on H. H for hurry up Mrs. Hombo and draw the diagram. All right, so here is my circle with my little click. All right, what have they drawn this time? Okay, so we're now on this one, number H. Oh, this looks interesting. So they've given me O is center. Given O is center. Okay, what else? All right, you can see we've got point B sitting on the circumference there, D sitting on the circumference there. They, this arc BD, that's a D, I hope you can see it's a D. Uh, this arc, do you see here, this arc BD is subtending an angle at the center, that means to hold it up, of exactly 95 degrees. Ah, then you'll notice, I see, look, look, that same arc is subtending an angle at the circumference. So actually, when you see me draw it from the scratch, it actually is a big help, because then you're seeing it unfold, and that is X, whoa, whoa. And lastly, then they joined from B to a point C on the circumference, and from the point D also to that point C. And they made that Y. So you've got to understand O is the center and angle B, O, D is given as 90. Now, to find X is going to be super easy, okay? To find Y, there's two ways you could do it. But the one way I haven't taught you yet. That brings in cyclic quadrilaterals. So because you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna do Y, the only way you know how to do it. Okay, but let's start with X. Do you agree, put your finger here where the arc is touching at the point B, go to the end. That arc is holding up the 95. The same arc, B, D is subtending at circumference, the angle X which is half of this. So if you just divide 95 by two, I think it's 47 or 47 comma five, the cow's close. <laughs> X equals to 47 comma five degrees. Just want to double that, times that by two and we're back to 95, yeah. And then that's your reason, angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. Now, as you find something, put it in your diagram. So put that in your diagram. Sometimes you need that. Now, the only way you're going to be able to do Y, we need to find that reflex angle. And because of the angles in the revolution, we will get it by just subtracting 95 from 360. Okay? Okay, guys. Please don't um, talk while I'm talking. So keep watching. So I'm doing it a slight long method. You don't know at this point about cyclic quads. I could do it a much faster method. I'll teach you that in the next lesson. But just for interest, if as long as 
I refer to O1, I've labeled O1. Look in my diagram, there it is. So if you just go 360 minus the 95, you will get the reflex angle at center to be um, 265. I'm just going to go angles in a revolution. Remember, you could have said some angles around the point. So now if you know that this angle is 265, then this angle is going to be half. So if I just divide that by 2, so y is going to be 132,5 degrees. And again, you don't have to say reflex. That's why I'm putting it in a bracket. But reflex center times angle at circumference. Now, just for interest, this is just, you don't have to, like, remember this, and I'm never going to mention it again. But in this section, coming up, if you get a four-sided quadrilateral with all four vertices on the circumference, like this, we'll be doing this soon, maybe by this week still, but we call that quadrilateral in this section, if all four vertices have to be on the circumference, a cyclic quadrilateral. We just go cyclic quad. And one of the properties I will teach you is that the opposite angles equals 180 degrees. So you see, the quicker way to have done that, if you had known that, is instead of doing all this, I could have just gone 180 degrees minus this angle of 47,5, and I still would have got the same answer, but then I could have just gone y equals 132,5 degrees, and I will teach you to say opposite angles, cyclic quad. Now, I haven't done cyclic quads, but I just mentioned there was a quicker and easier way to do it. So I want to say it again. If you have a four-sided quadrilateral, all four vertices must lie on circumference. We call that a cyclic quadrilateral. The opposite angles add up to 180. They are not equal. It's not a parallelogram. The opposite angles of the cyclic quad, so that angle there plus that angle there would add up to 180. Now that's still new work. I would have expected you for homework to have done it like that. All right, so let's move on. I'm going to erase that one out. We're going to go on to number I. All right. So I think so far you can see this actually this is fun geometry. This is really fun. You just got to know your you've got to know your work and you've got to know your reasons. If you know your work and you know your reasons, it's actually a lot more fun, I think, than grade 10 geometry. Way more fun. And fun does not mean hard, it just means fun, actually. Okay, I. Okay, this time we've got point P and Q on the circumference. And at the top here, we've got point R on the circumference. Then they've joined a chord from P to R, another chord from R to Q. There we go. Um, center plays a role, and they are going to say, given, it said it on the other page, by the way, O is the center for all of these questions. So, yeah. Then they drew, for number I, a um, radius, dish, another radius, dish, and lastly, they joined the chord PQ. So, take the smudge away at that point. In. Now, it's very important you understand, if I want to refer to this part of the angle, Let's call that Q1 and let's call that Q2. And if I want to refer to this part of the angle, that would be P1. This part of the angle would be P2. So in an exam, you will always see we will do that for you. Not always in the textbook. But if you're working in the textbook, you're welcome to refer to 1 as 1 and 2 as 2, etc. But remember, if you write in your textbook, it must be in a pencil. And when you finish the problem, you must erase the pencil out because that book does not belong to you. It belongs to property of Greenside High School. All right. So now let's have a look. What else did they give me? They said, this is X. This is 70. 
oh, Q1 is 70, and this is why. Okay, now this is a lovely, I love it, okay? Um, hopefully you've had a chance to look at this at home, but you know that from O to P would equals from O to Q. They didn't tell us that, but we know that radii are equal. So if this is therefore the isosceles triangle, which you can't mention, then I can conclude that angle P1 would also be 70 degrees. Okay, so let's start with my statement, followed by my reasons. Because remember, reasons are half the mark. Okay. My first statement, but what I want to write what was given, given, let's call it Q1 equals 70 degrees. All right. Now, always look for things. Okay, first I write that up. So what we now know the angle P1 hat. Remember, I've referred to this P1. Degree equals to angle Q1, which is 70 degrees. Now, you can't say isosceles triangle. I've told you that. You've got to go angles opposite equal radia. Or you could say angles opposite equal sides, comma, radia. Whatever you prefer. Now, because of some angles in a triangle, we can get x. So if we add 70 and 70, we get 140. So therefore, x must be 40 degrees because of y, some angles, triangle. You'll see Mr. December and me, we always say to the students, Acknowledge which triangle you're in because there are the triangles often, but you wouldn't just mark that because this is a triangle and 70 plus 70 is 140, then because the interior angles add up to 180, this is 40. Put it in your diagram. Okay, now if you have, look, whether it's this chord PQ or this arc PQ holding up, subtending an angle at center. If you go down that same chord or arc, PQ, chord arc, is subtending angle at circumference. And this will be half of the angle at center, so that would be 20. So you'll say, Y is 20 degrees. And what's our reason? Angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. All right. We've done it. Now let's look at the mark allocation for something like that. All right. Something like this. They'd probably give one mark statement and reason. Because it's basically, you know, the angles opposite equal sides. Um, so it kind of goes back to like grade eight, grade nine. And grade eight, nine, and 10 is always one mark for statement and reason. Whereas the new stuff you'll see now that we're doing in grade 11 is one mark statement, one mark reason. So now, the fact that X was 40 sum angles triangle, again, you learned that in grade eight. So that also would be one mark statement reason. But remember, if you leave your reason out, you get nothing. So even if you say X is 40, but you don't give a reason, or you say P1 is 70, but you don't give a reason, you've lost it. That's why you need to give reasons. But now this is grade 11. So that mark would be one for statement, one for reason. So that question would have been four marks. But this is a level two easy question. What makes the questions harder is just that you, you get more lines in the diagram. And sometimes you get two circles in the diagram. So it, it's not that it's a hard section, it's just more to look at. All right, so let's erase that. Hopefully you're getting these right. So we now just have one last chain. Okay, this one's a clever question. It's starting to bring in parallel lines. They often, angels, they often bring in parallel lines in this section. So then you associate with your fun angles. Remember, we started that in grade eight. Remember the F for corresponding angles, the U for co-interior angles, and the N, if you do it as an N, for the alternate angles. 
Um, yeah, so if you see parallel lines in the section, you know we're going to use one of those, if not all of them, but definitely one of them. All right, so now let me just read for the diagram. We're looking at number J. Okay, so again, they have given me, given OE center, they will always write that, as I've said before. Okay, let's try and draw what they drew. Okay, so we've got from P of the circumference going to O, that's a radius, from O coming here to Q, all right? So straight away, they're just flying pins, straight away, um, if they join that you have an isosceles triangle, then the, if they had, but they haven't, you see straight away, you can see that this arc is subtending an angle at center. So before I continue my diagram, I'm just making you aware. Then they drew a chord, but it's parallel to QO. So the chord is something like this. At the circumference there is R. So they are going to tell us, they have to tell us that OQ is parallel to RP. And there are the arrowheads. And what else? There's something missing. And then they join from R to Q, which is a chord. Okay. Now, if we want to refer, I'm just already getting ready to, well, let's first put in what they want. So they gave us, this is 20 degrees given. So um, what I'll do is I'll write that R, P, O is given as 20 degrees, that will be in the writing, and I want us just to determine x. Okay, now this is why I said you've got to have a plan. And I'm thinking, okay, if they give you parallel lines, we will use them. <laughs> it's as simple as that. They are not going to just be there for fun. Do you see everybody from there to there? Do you see they alternate, okay? They alternate. So let's call that O1. We know that O1 will be equals angle. Let's call that P1, just to be safe, okay? So I'm going to tell my examiner that O1 hat equals the exact same value as P1, which is the angle they gave me, which is 20 degrees. Now, how did I know that? Remember, if you have two parallel lines and you have a transversal, then you know that that angle is alternate to that. And of course, of course, uh, you've got to acknowledge the lines. So I will say alt angles. And if you do not go semicolon OQ parallel to PRP, you do not get that mark. And guess what? Land drops. That is grade eight. So it's one mark for all of that. Now here's the irony, bitter irony. If you leave semicolon OQ parallel to RP out, you don't get anything. And this is where people start to crash in their exams because they know it's alternate, they're in a rush, and they forget that we've got to be 100% precise with our reasons. And if you don't confirm which lines were parallel, you're not going to get that mark. Now, I don't know if you notice this. I'll go over it in red. Does everyone see this arc? Do you see it's at 10, 20 degrees at the center? Now, go down with your fingers. Do you see the same arc is subtending an angle of X at the circumference? And it's in the same segment. So remember, it's always double in the middle. So therefore, we can deduce that is 10 equals to 10 degrees. Why? Angle at center equals two times angle at circumf. And that would be one, one. So this question, if you were lucky enough to get it, would be out of three marks. All right, so now we've done all of that. Then I, uh, we're just looking uh, again at the diameter. So I'm going to erase this out. Okay. For those who were watching yesterday, there's no proof for what I'm going to show you again, but it is called a corollary. 
I can never pronounce that word, but it just mm. means you can conclude the following because of what we have just done. Angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. Man, and ten minutes left. Hello? You have ten oh. minutes left. Ten minutes left. Thank you, chicken. So I did this yesterday, just to remind you today. If you are given that O is your center, and you see a chord going through that center, dish, all right, A, B. They very often in exam will say A, B is a diameter. Now, the minute they, they tell you that, you know it. But the, the minute they tell you it's a diameter, when I'm spreading this wrong, let me just shut up. Diameter, okay, something like that. I can tell you, you must look out for what I'm going to show you now. You, it's a clue. So you look to see, does the diameter like have a triangle with the third vertice on the circumference? It has to be on the circumference, not sort of in the middle of the circle. So if you see a chord, which is a diameter going through the center, then you can conclude, you must just know that this angle will be 90. So angle C, is 90 and if you were watching yesterday you have to go angle in a semi circle they don't want you to say angle at center is two times angle at circumference for this okay um, just why it is so i was telling you that remember if that is a point you did this in grade eight that is a straight angle and a straight angle and a straight line is 180 degrees so the angle at center is double the angle at the circumference. But as I say, they want you to say angle in a semicircle. And I just tell my students, just think, the minute you've got a diameter, it creates two semicircles, one on the one side and one on the other. You very often find, not always, but sometimes there might be another one on the other side. Okay, so if this here is, let's say, D, diameter, go along the perimeter, there we go, 90. Angle D is also 90. Two reasons here. I could go angle in a semicircle. The other reason, again, you haven't really learned yet, but I mentioned it today for the first time. Do you see for interest a cyclic quadrilateral? Okay, just for interest, yes, I do. Look, I have a four-sided figure and all four vertices lie on the circumference. So this is called a cyclic quadrilateral. Now, it just so happens that they both are equal at 90, but that's not the property. Remember, the opposite angles must add up to 180. So if the one is 90, then the opposite angle would be 90 because of opposite angle cyclic quad. So, or, not that you've learned that yet, you could have said D equals to 90 once you've already got those two marks there, and then you could go opposite angles cyclic quad. But you've got to remember, I've got to stress, they're not equal, okay? The opposite angle, Angles of a cyclic one, I'm just putting in brackets, it's not part of the reason, but they are supplementary. Supplementary. Now, supplementary means add up to 180. I always remembered that when I was a kid, because if you just put a line through the S, it looks like an 8. And 8 reminds me of 180. I think I told you that. And if you write supplementary versus complementary, if I put a line there, I see a 9. So the complementary angles add up to 90. And put a line there, I see an 8. So um, supplementary, S for supplementary, add up to 180. It's just something I always learned when I was young. Okay, so now we can start looking in the textbook at bring amateur. So you said I have 10 minutes left. The textbook. All right, so now my textbook is getting so dirty. If I turn the page to page 218, I will take the photograph 
before I leave. Um, all right, they give you a few web examples. Then if you go to exercise three, which starts here, you can do A, B, C, D, okay? And not only that, I'm also going to send you this photograph here. Um, and I want to see if you can also do this whole thing, remember, with the reasons. Because I cannot give you a hard copy, the best is when I photograph it, just redraw diagram, make sure you've drawn it the same as me, and then you can do it easily. But guys, all I want you to do is a, B, C, D from exercise three, that page, plus this exercise, then just for this Wednesday, not for always, there'll be no Zoom. What I want you to do is I want you to learn the three proofs. The three proofs of my heart. Do you remember if I give you a center and I give you a chord, and I give you a line, and I say that line is, let's say, hitting the midpoint, and you've got to prove it uh, perpendicular, and you did your construction, blah, blah, blah. That one, and remember, if I give you a center chord, I give you a line, and I say it's perpendicular, prove that, you know, prove that it will be the midpoint, and then remember, there's that one, prove that the angular center is two, and its conference. And actually, there was another one because I did the reflex angle. So actually, they're, they're theoretically four. So I want you to just learn them. Um, so the, if I just saw you in pick and play and I say, oh, hi, Nelly, um, here's a piece of paper and a pen. Just, just quickly prove you know that theorem. I, I will. And I will if I meet you. So, ha. Huh. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye. You know what to do. I'll take photographs and I love you lots. I'll see you on Thursday. Just take note Thursday at 10.20. And if you don't mind, Hasha, just confirm no Zoom tomorrow. You can just say what the homework is and tell them we'll meet on Thursday at 10.20. Bye, chickens.